When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require porting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Are you ready to unapologetically unleash your bold and define your life, money, and business? Define You Radio Class is in session with host the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace, brings you the stories behind the glory. Hear from women and men who decided that life didn't define them. They were going to define themselves. Pen and Papers Ready Class is now in session. Yes, hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. This is Valencia Griffin-Wallace, and thank you so much for tuning in to Define You Radio Classes in Session, where you get the tips, strategies, and life lessons to help you unleash and define your life. Tonight, we are interviewing Janet Wise and learning how to name, claim, and aim our brilliance. If you have dialed in tonight and would like to get on the line with us, make sure you press 1 on your keypad, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, make sure you follow and connect with the show on Blog Talk Radio and Define You Radio's Facebook page for updates, show notes, and guest information. Now, our guest tonight is very wise, like her last name. <laughs> She's also a former HR exec. She created a company, Wise Advantages, to share career strategies with women to help them build a stronger, more powerful, and impactful brand and career. Now, I want you guys to think about that because a lot of times we associate branding with business, but your brand, or better yet, your personal brand, is what you say to the world. We know a lot of companies, a lot of people you deal with on a personal and professional level, they do tend to check you out on social media. So you want to make sure you're you're giving the message that you want people to know who who are you? What's your what's your brand? So with that being said, guys, I want you to get ready and pen and papers because we're all going to learn together how to name, claim, and aim our brilliance with Miss Janet. So Miss mm. Janet, welcome to Define You Radio. Valencia, it is my pleasure and honor to be here. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit more about you? Absolutely. Well, I will share with you that I'm not only a, a former corporate HR executive, I'm actually still a current HR executive and somebody who brings the um, experience of working with global Fortune 500 companies, building leadership and emerging talent, particularly with a focus of women, and I now have my own little side hustle, right? And you'll and we can talk about that perhaps later in the show. Um, but maybe like many of your um, listening audience, this is a way to also name, claim, and aim our brilliance. Um, if we're not able to, and there, I, and I will share ways that you can do it in your current role. But one of those strategies are to create opportunities for you to express that brilliance even if it is not in your current role. So it's not for everybody to have a full-time gig and a part-time gig, um, but it, it works for me. So for more than 16 years, as I said, I've been identifying and preparing career-focused 
women talent inside organizations for corporate leadership roles. So human resources executive, talent strategist, and I've got the credentials, and I did it late in life. Um, I did it uh, in my 40s um, after a divorce um, as a single mom, and I was just laughing because before this, Valencia, I was having dinner with my family. I'm here in New York. We had a bit of a snowstorm today, so I have a full house. Yes, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your branding when you talk about classes in session because this is so important, particularly for women. And I shared with, um, I sh- I'll share with anybody, but I was just sharing with my family, you know, when if somebody says class, I say when. I am like a seminar junkie, but I wasn't always that way. But for me to advance in my career, getting that credential was important. So working full-time, I did go back to school, finish my bachelor's degree. I got a master's degree in human capital development. And I have two advanced degrees in executive coaching and media psychology. And this Gallup certified as a strengths finder, and I know we'll talk about what that means um, later. But it's truly my mission really, to get more women creating their personal brands and their brilliant point of view because that is what's going to take them to the next level in their career and, more importantly, doing more work they love. And I walk the talk on this. I know you do too. But now, probably maybe more than ever, the world needs engaged and brilliant women to deliver their value to their knowledge and their expertise so that everybody can benefit. Them, their families, the business, their own businesses, whether they're working for themselves or working for an organization. So I firmly believe that. Wow, you said like a mouthful and a half. <laughs> I love I love that you touched on your your backstory and and why you do it and I'm glad that you hit points, you know, that women, you know, dealing with women, even though class is in session, you know, it's for the guys too. But Absolutely. I Absolutely. I, when it, I, and may I say mm-hmm. that any of the strategies I share tonight are completely gender neutral. It's just that I do focus on women only because we've been underrepresented. But absolutely, mm. in my corporate role, of course, I, I, I coach and I, and I manage, you know, uh, male, so gender gender neutral zone, absolutely. <laughs> I love that a gender neutral zone. So <laughs> when we talk about personal branding, now I I understand branding uh, from a business point, and I think I'm pretty familiar with it in as far as you know personally. But why don't you go ahead and explain what exactly is a personal brand? Yes. Yes, it's very it, it, it's very important. Um, two things, if, if your listeners are writing anything down and, and, and taking any notes or if they keep any class notes listening in to you each week, I would say write this down. The first is you are the most important product you will ever market. Mm. Yes. So that means, and the second piece is your brand is what they say about you when you leave the room. Now, I'm not going back to high school days and, you know, what, what everybody's gossiping about, you know, after the party the night before. But you know what? It is a little similar <laughs> in the sense, though, we hope that we've grown up to the point where we can be strategic and intentional because personal branding is what sets you apart from others with similar skills and abilities. Now, as consumers, you're, you're, you're right on. We interact with brands every day, but we tend not to attach branding to ourselves. But I am here to tell you that as both a careerist or an entrepreneur, or if you're looking to get back into the workforce or start your own business, you'll need one. And this really all 
sort of became popular and mainstream, there was a management guru. His name is Tom Peters. He wrote an article in Fast Company magazine, and the article was called The Brand Called You. And if you Google it, and you can and you probably should, you can, you can read about it. But it is the most effective and innovative strategy any individual can use to achieve professional success and fulfillment. And, hey, it's success on your, on your own terms, right? I'm not going to dictate what that success looks like. But right. that's how you're going to get there. So think of your personal brand as what's setting you apart uniquely, authentically. I'm not talking about selling out. I'm not talking about fitting into somebody else. Authentically you, and even with some of my clients, expertly. Claiming to be an expert. And remember, if it's true, it, it, you know, it, it ain't bragging if it's true. But it is about who you are as well as who you are not, what you do, and what makes you unique in what you do. And then you take it a little further and you want to think through why does it matter to your audience, your, your listening audience. Ask, I'm asking you to Ask yourself that. Why what you do matters, whether it's your manager, your company, to your, to your own you know, customers and clients. So branding is one of the most important aspects of any business, right? You said it at the on- onset. Right. So the simplest when we talk about brand, the textbook definition is your promise to the customer. But it's telling mm-hmm. you again it tells them what to expect. It differentiates your offers from, from competitors. Right? So why do, you, why do you buy a Benz as opposed to a Ford? It's not always the price. If you can afford, if you can, uh, if you can afford at the Benz level, maybe is it a Benz or is it a Porsche? Okay? If it's at the Ford level, is it a Ford or is it a Chevy? Right? Uh, There's, it's, not, it's not always on price what stands apart something that's going to make it uniquely you. BMW, it's the ultimate driving machine. You know, Porsche, it's about performance. But it's not just about branding. Would I be able to tell a little story about how I differentiate around um, celebrity brands and expertise and authenticity? Would it be okay if I did that? Sure. (laughs) So, all right. (laughs) So, I like to give an example um, of celebrity brands. So Dr. Phil, if we look at Dr. Phil, we know there are, if you Googled psychiatrists and psychologists, my God, I can only imagine the hundreds of thousands of returns of hits you'd get back on psychologists. So he's not the only psychologist in the world, clearly. But what he does is he makes psychology accessible. He makes it understandable to the general public. And he does that by addressing important social issues. Now, what's interesting to note here is his background. And you called it Valencia, right? You said the backstory. Right. Really important. It's really important. He was a forensic psychologist, and he had a business helping lawyers choose good and impartial jurors for an upcoming case. And it just so happened that the company he was associated with was representing Oprah during her trial when the Texas cattle owners, like maybe 10, 12 years ago, the Texas cattle owners sued her for something she said on air about red meat. About beef. Yeah, I remember that. That was like forever ago. Yes. I remember that, that though. Yep, that is when she met Dr. Phil. Now, I'm going to come back to that for a second. I'm going to give you somebody else, Nancy Grace. Now, she's a legal commentator on one of the cable networks. Mm -hmm. Whether you like her or not, not important. What is important, (laughs) right, what is important is she's got a clear point of view on victim rights, a clear point of view. See, her interesting backstory was while she was in college studying literature, her fiancé was murdered. And, when she, and upon graduating, she decided 
to go into law school and become a felony prosecutor. So what I'm highlighting here is these are two people in, with credentials, okay, they're in a profession that they needed credentials. You don't always need credentials, but they needed credentials in there, you know, to be licensed. But they have individual strengths and they have individual personal experiences. And that's what I mean about it's a brand, but it's grounded in authenticity. It's the way they develop. Because, look, lots of legal commentators, as I said, lots of psychiatrists, like I said, what makes them stand out. So you do that by discovering or uncovering how you positively stand out. Then I work with clients to help them get that brilliance and let that light shine. Does that I make love sense? the two examples. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. the two examples that you use because for the most part people know who, you know, Dr. Phil is and yes. Nancy Grace. Mm-hmm. And they are so clear with with who they are. It's like they were a a brand because, you know, like you said, who they're they're a personal brand based on a backstory. Uh, yeah. rooted in authenticity, which, you know, became a, a business. It's certain things that you associate with Dr. Phil. It's certain things you associate with Nancy Grace. So right. I love that you use those two examples that most people can use. And, you know, you're building, they were building their personal brand or being a personal brand before we knew they were a personal brand, so to speak. So I love that you hit on that. And the piece here is sometimes, you know, we think that that people will show up and they're already um, a star or a brand or famous or Mm -hmm. successful, however you define success. So the first thing I always say is don't compare your middle with somebody else's end, right? If You know, if they're already there. And the other thing is don't hide from – What makes you, you? Meaning, I look at experiences with my clients. I look at their strengths. I do a bunch of different assessments. I look at their work history. I look at where they want to go. But when we're building their brand, there's also something else. And I I like that you called it the backstory. It It is their experiences. It is their experiences. Because that's what makes it real. So don't hide from it. Not everybody, everything is rosy growing up. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You know, maybe you got married three times. Maybe you never got married. Maybe you had eight jobs. Maybe you've only had two. But all of this, okay, even challenges, it could be anything, bankruptcy, could be hitting the lottery, it could be widowhood, it could be single mom, but all of that plays into what is going to make you uniquely you in how you do what you do. And one thing I know for sure is I was at the talent table in these organizations many times, right? I I tell the story. I say it on my website. And I'm advising senior leadership now. Who's going to get those key assignments? Who's going to be the the rising stars in the in, in the organization? So yeah, I know what they're looking for in the boardroom. How you want to position yourself? How do you want to align yourself? But the piece to it is you still need to have that personal brand because everybody's doing the do. Everybody's got to be the high performer. You've got to show up with that. So that's a given. So again, if that's the level playing field. What else can you bring to make you stand out? And it's going to come back to developing a point of view. I mean, Nancy's got a point of view. Anybody could have a point of view, right? And if you don't have a point of view yet, be a student of the industry. Always have class in session. But (laughs) borrow one. You can talk about the research. It's also about knowing what you stand for. And your values, that's you. And understanding your strengths, your brilliance, all of that, that develops you. So whether you are, you know, um, 
you can be a, a manager, you could be an executive assistant, you can be the CEO of your own organization, you can be an attorney. I worked in law firms, by the way, Valencia, and this was really important. This was really, really interesting. I was working um, with, with um, they were about mid-year associates, and they would come in and say, yeah, I am an associate working in corporate M&A. And I used to say, so what? What's the client going to care? I'm in New York City. There's got to be hundreds of third-year associates working in, 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 a, in a corporate law practice. What else is going to make you stand out? There has to be a way that you either approach your research or deliver the deliverables. What's your backstory? That's what I want to get people to think about. All of that, and it's real. It's authentic. You can't make that up, right? It's the real deal. That's what I want people to bring to the table because that's what's, because that's what's going to help them stand out. So when we look at um... – you know, the let's say the quote-unquote everyday woman or everyday person that, mm-hmm. you know, they're going out, for instance, looking for a, a job or yeah. wants to get promoted in, in a job or wanting to start a business or build a brand. Right. What would be the first thing you would tell them because a lot of times when you ask people that question, I know because I've been asked this question, what makes you different from somebody else? Right. You know, and we know that difference is why some resumes will get looked at, some people Mm -hmm. will to work with you versus others. Um, You know, it's, it's that difference. We need to know how to not only identify but how to Present it. Right. Okay. So, yes, I'm listening. <laughs> so I will tell you, the reason that that happens is, is because you didn't own your own brand. So there's another saying I'll share with you all. One size fits all, fits no one. And this is uh. never more true than when you are applying for another job. Or trying to, I would say, or trying to get that promotion, but at least you're a little bit of a of a known entity. But especially when you're just apply, applying and applying online, because it's it's blind, right? It's just you on paper. So if I if I if I tell you a story, if you think about this, um, I'm I'm a boomer, right? I'm a baby boomer. So back in the day. <laughs> I used to watch a show called Green Acres, and maybe it's on like MeTV and you can catch a rerun, but there was a character on this show called Mr. Drucker. And on the show, Mr. Drucker had a general store. And you see, he was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So if you came in and your horse was sick or you needed you know, food for your cattle, Mr. Drucker could sell it to you. If you came in to the general store and you needed to mail a package, Mr. Drucker could help you with that. He could be the postmaster. Okay, so so how does this relate to you? Well, if you're ever really thinking to yourself, I've got a great resume, I've got experience, maybe I have the credentials or I'm not getting the interview, Um, or if you're an entrepreneur and you've got so many services to offer and you're thinking, why aren't these clients all just flocking to me? It comes back to that one-size-fits-all approach, like Mr. Drucker and Green Acres, meaning you cannot be all things to all people. That's not the approach because it doesn't work. See, there's – well, I shouldn't say it doesn't work. In very limited instances, okay, um, where where we think there's value and convenience in being a one-stop shop, but in most cases – you're really diluting your brand and you're diluting your worth. So if you're applying for a job and you're, let's say you're writing that cover letter, those days of generic cover letters, they don't work. You need to stand for yourself. So that means that whether it's your resume, whether it's your LinkedIn profile, whether um, you know, it's, it's your cover letter, and if you're looking for a job, 
you need to be you need to have all of these pieces right these are these are all sort of part of your marketing package for yourself but you also need to have this personal brand statement because it's not going to be enough to even land the job you need to stand out from the applicants so what i suggest you do is align you have to spend time, okay, because I have clients that come to me and they think, well, can you just work with me on one session and, you know, do this, help me do that? Typically, no, unless I'm doing some sort of a VIP session and we're, and we're putting together several hours. Um, but it takes time and introspection. And anybody can do this right now if you think about celebrating and, and aligning what are your strengths are. Just think in terms of what are you good at. But when you're looking at that, that, that job application, you want to then look, know what you bring to the table. So you sort of do um, in, a self-inventory on yourself. And then to each of the jobs you're applying for. In an HR term, this is called mirroring. Um, and, and that means you want to repeat the key terms and phrases that, that the hiring manager is looking for, what's being said within their um, that job description, but you want to align to that. You want to customize it, and you've got to do that for each job. So it's very, very time-consuming, but it's worth the investment. The other thing is, and I say you didn't have a brand, what often happens is you're thinking it's all about you. Well, it is and it isn't. And what I mean is I want to encourage your listening, listeners that they must know themselves, know your values, Know what you're bringing to the table, and you've got to be able to translate that into the personal brand, something that you can talk about because they're always going to start with, tell me about yourself. And that doesn't mean rattling off all your jobs and all the things you can do. That means they want to hear about you, and then you weave it in there. So you can take an online assessment. I mean, I use with my, with my clients, I use something called StrengthsFinder, um, you can Google it, StrengthsFinder 2.0. There's a short little book with it. You can take it. You can take it online. Um, and then, uh, you know, I can talk, you know, ways about, you know, what what you should be looking for that and 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 what that and what that means. Okay. But, well, now since you brought up StrengthsFinder, <laughs> and okay, because I want to go ahead and roll into the interview because that hour does kind of go by fast. <laughs> um, what does that mean, mm-hmm. and how do you help people find their strengths? So I'm helping them uncover their strengths, right? So I use mm-hmm. a few different assessments, but one in particular, as I just mentioned, Strengths Finder uh, 2.0. Mm-hmm. Now, that is an online assessment. It's developed by the Gallup organization, um, and it's really um, – uh, through a series of custom questions, it will help people uncover their strengths. So that means it helps them identify what you do naturally. And then it shows you how you, it really shows you how you're special, how you're unique. So you begin to understand that, you see, your strength lies in knowing your talents. So the Strengths Finder helps you discover what makes you unique and powerful. But the key to success is to fully understand how to apply your greatest talents or strengths in, hmm. in, in, in your life, okay, not just in your job, but, but in your life. And that's what it means to me about your brilliance. So I encourage anybody to listen. You can take this online, but oftentimes you need to work with um, you know, a Gallup-approved coach in this instance because it's a, it's, a, it's a license, to really, as I said, apply it. I am all for information, but more than that, I am for implementation. I'm for action, right? So it's less about the theory. You can have lots of high content, but it doesn't mean anything if you're not, you know, jumping in and applying it. That's where the rubber meets the road. So that's why that's, that's, why that's important. And then usually I have, um, have them do something on values. As I said, values are very important. 
these are guideposts. Um, you know, you want to take a job or you're looking for an organization, you want to make sure that it's the right organization for you. I mean, just be, it's, it's like dating. Just because somebody asks you out or asks you to dance doesn't mean you have to say yes. You want to know, is that the right person? Is this the right organization? Um, if you have your own business, you want to know what kind of clients you want to attract. That all comes also from your values as well, right? So you need to uncover that and then make a list of your accomplishments. I start everything with an exercise called Celebrate You. What is it? Look back. Look back. You can look back on your whole life, but look back. If you're in a job, look at your performance reviews or listen to what your clients are saying on any testimonials that you, that you have for them or that they've had for you, rather. And all of that, and that starts to weave a pattern. You know, before I went back to school, I was a paralegal. And what that has done is it makes me think in patterns. So I, I call it the red thread of your brilliance. And success leaves patterns, and I love to share that with clients, but that red thread brilliance, it's in them. And sometimes you just need somebody to help excavate it. So that first thing is celebrating it. And then we work on how are you going to communicate and message that brilliance, and then how are you going to illuminate it. That's when you're standing in all of your power. So as you say, you can't just do that in one session, um, but you really can start laying the foundation for it you got to know where you are, where do you want to go, and then do that work in between. So if someone, um, let's say they their personal strength is not uh, being a leader, right? They're not strong mm-hmm. on the, the leadership spectrum of life, but they right. want to start and lead a, a business, an organization, or they just want they want to find themselves in a leadership position. What would you do in that situation? Now, they're not strong in that area, but they desire to be strong in mm. that area. So there's two things, and this is okay. So this is where I'm unique, okay, in that. I'm not only just going to answer that question from somebody who understands um, strengths or answer that question from somebody who has a master's in human capital development, but I also spend my time day in and day out developing developing leaders and, and leadership, right? So I design programs, right? I do this training. Here's what I can share with you on that is, I am a, as much as I'm a firm believer that you are the most important product you will ever market, I am also a firm believer that you do not, you need to play to your strengths. Now, I don't mean ignore your weaknesses, but if your weakness is not an obstacle, meaning if it's not in in the way of achieving what you need, you do not need to focus on that. Okay, so for instance, what I, let me show, tell you what I mean by that. Um, I share with you I'm not very tech-oriented. I mean, meaning I don't want to write a program, do many, too many toasts, create, um, create links and, and, and shortcuts and, and all of those 411 hacks and all of that. I don't like it. Do I want to use it? Yes. Can I do it? Can I do it? Well, I could, but it's a waste of my time and takes me forever, and I get too frustrated. Um, That's not where my brilliance lies. So what I would do is if I want to achieve that, similarly, if somebody doesn't have a strong leadership skill, and I would test that first, meaning I would test if that's true because sometimes we think of leadership being defined as, one one term or used in one way. And sometimes we're leading the local PTA or we're leading a movement, whether it's in our church, whether it's in our neighborhood, and we're leading without really having that title. So I just put that out there that sometimes we think leadership means like, you know, the general in the army and we're taking, you know, we're going to take that mountain over there. So I just want to just broaden that. But the but the, coming back to what you're saying is if we truly need to develop it if, it, if it truly needs to be developed, there are 
programs. There are there's some reading you can do. There are some experiences that you could have um, to to develop that. Or you can still lead. It doesn't necessarily – there's different aspects to it. Lead in what regards? So, in other words, you need to know enough about yourself. Again, a lot of self-discovery because you can build a team. No leader – is doing it on their own. Nobody is just creating in a vacuum. And I know I said gender neutral, and I'll say this is a political free zone, so I'm just going to talk in generalities. Even a president, when he comes in, okay, has to bring people with him because nobody, nobody does it alone, okay? And women, this is what I mean about women, we tend to think we have to do it all by ourselves. Or we tend to think that, um, that we're going to show a sign of weakness by saying that we want some help. And I say it's counterintuitive. Surround yourself by, by building a team that plays to each other's strengths. Nobody just likes vanilla ice cream. That's why there's 31 flavors, right? Is there you have to have that rainbow. You have to have a combination of skills. Doesn't need to come from all from you. But as a leader, think of yourself as somebody who is conducting the orchestra. You've got the wind section, you've got you've got horn section, you've got the string sec- section. Your brilliance may be in bringing all of that symphony together doesn't mean you have to play all of those instruments. So does that make sense? Yes. Now, if someone, what do you consider to be a brilliant brand or a brilliant personal brand? What does that so look a, like? Yes. So a brilliant personal brand, and I look, I will, I will say, all okay, right, who do I think does it exceptionally well? Believe it or not, the KKs of the world, right? The, the Kim Kardashians of the world. Now, there is a whole. Now, I'm not saying like or don't like her, like her husband, don't like and like the whole family, but a marketing machine you have never seen. That's that family. Now, where I don't feel that it's true is I don't feel it's so authentic. So right. I don't just attach just in brands. I do tend to say, what do you want to be known for? Quite frankly, and this is a personal opinion, what I believe that she's known for um, is is not what the average person wants to be known for. Yeah, this celebrity. Right. (laughs) I'm saying, like, just when I talked about Dr. Phil or Nancy Grace, you can be your own celebrity. I mean, rock your world. Walk your own red carpet in whatever field you are in. But you're going to do that by bringing in, as I said, your te- what makes you you in your field. And that takes time to, to look inward and know yourself. Ask your friends. Ask your family. What do you think I do well? You know, oh. I, I, right? what do you think I do well? Or ask them. Describe me in one word. One word. You might think you know but you'll be surprised what somebody comes back to you with. I had a client do this recently, and she asked, you know, a few of her sort of inner circle, and she thought, yeah, I know what they're going to come back with. I'm a good project manager. I'm really conscientious. Okay, yes, those things came back, and that's a, that's a good thing. But she had somebody who wrote her a letter. She said, I know you said to me one word or one sentence. She went on for two paragraphs. My client was in tears, meaning she could not believe how beautiful, written, but how she was being perceived. So, yes, it's perception, but you do want to be able to have it grounded in authenticity because otherwise it's the magazines. We don't know what's being airbrushed or what's not real. If it's real, your girlfriends know it's real because we will sniff it out and call you out on it. <laughs> so it's, it has it has to be – that's why I'm saying it has to be real. So there are brands, but I tend to attach myself more to a celebrity brand 
that's routed in right. authenticity and in expertise as opposed to just a Hollywood brand. So I kind of make that distinction for the obvious, I think. <laughs> understood, understood. <laughs> If, if someone, let's say someone, okay, so I look when I look at at my quote mm-hmm. unquote brand, um, which I tell people uh, my brand was built around me and my person and who I am. You know, it was, and it just kind of went on from there. And um, so when I when what if I wanted to change? my personal brand. What if I wanted a more quiet, uh, quote unquote, a more quiet brand? You know, I have a, a very bold, confident yeah. brand. Those are those are my things. And but what if I wanted a more you know, like a more quiet brand? Mm. Or what if I wanted a brand that was, you know, more outrageous and, and everything <laughs> else? <laughs> Even though, because it's some it's some things I don't do just because of who I am, you know, right. as a as a lady, as a a southern right. woman, as you know who who I am and what I represent. It's some things I don't do. For instance, I don't cuss or mm-hmm. use curse words or obscene language in my posts, but some right. brands do. So, and some people do. So what if what if I said, okay, Janet, I want to build an outrageous, ridiculous, in your face um, brand. I want to, I want that to be my brand. What would you say? Number I one, would, Valencia, that's not who you are. <laughs> well, I was well, Valencia. The first question I'm going to say is why? Okay, <laughs> why? Now, in the sense of, mm-hmm. is it? Is what's happening not working for you, right? So if it's not working for you, let's look at why it's not working, okay? Is it because it's not true to you or the messaging isn't right in how you're communicating to your people or you're really not happy with it? Now, you and I have talked on the phone before. I think one of the things that also attracted me to you, it was not only your mission and what you're doing is it was clear. You are bold. You are, um, when you say Southern Belle, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you hold true to that. You know, you talk about Miss Janet. That is that is you. <laughs> that is your core. And the thing is, that's why I would question why. It, do you want to change messaging or are you trying to change who you are? Because once we start trying to change who we are at our core, then the question becomes, are we selling out? We want to serve, but we don't want to what we don't want to sell out. Meaning, it's got to be true to us. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't try something on for size. That we can't play a little bit. I mean, look, we're you know, women. I know if you look in my closet, you know, I, my husband say, well, why do you have to have six different pairs of black pants? They're all black. It doesn't matter. Now, I, this is for this occasion, this is for this occasion, right. this goes right. here, right? So we can try something on, like trying on that, that little evening evening dress that looks looks great on the, on the rack and we put it on us, but does it fit us? So I would test that with you because your brand is pretty out there. It's it's pretty out there. So if Yay. you want to, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's real. I, I would say it just wouldn't feel. It just wouldn't feel right. I don't think it would feel right to you. So I, I agree one hundred percent. And I, I believe in our discussion uh, that we had a while ago. I was saying uh, somebody. I didn't realize I was a brand, quote unquote, till somebody else said something about my brand, and I was like, I'm just being me. So it was a an authentic transition that define you as a is an extension of me, but I see a lot with people, not only with their personal uh branding, but with certain business branding and so on and so forth. A lot of times people try to cut and paste or copy and paste like I say, because they see it working for someone for someone else. 
Right. You know? Right. And I guess that it, comes back to what you said about being authentic. And we could sniff it out. We can sniff it out. And a few things happen on, on this. Um, and, again, just particularly as women, we also mm-hmm. tend not to – see, you're comfortable also in a in a very, I want to say almost – reserved southern way, way, very respectful way of tooting your own horn. But you're also a businesswoman, right. okay? Yes, you're a bold woman, but you're also a businesswoman. And most women, we really stink at this, okay? Because <laughs> we, really, because we, cause you're always selling. That's the other thing. You want to sound by it. We are always selling. We are selling ourselves, selling ourselves to our boss, selling ourselves to our client, you know, we're, we're, we, we have to promote ourselves. I don't mean selling out, okay, and I don't mean putting ourselves on sale and cheapening us. I do not mean that. What I mean is promoting ourselves. But women, we tend to equate selling with being braggadocious, with being self-serving, with being unladylike. Um, and we also tend to think, well, heck, can I not just see that, like, I'm amazing and brilliant and I've got it all going on over here? But we, we think it's selling and we think icky, salesy. But, and sometimes there's a lack of confidence that we have that maybe our male counterparts don't experience. So I say think of it not about selling out your brand, but stop selling and think about serving. So whether you're selling yourself to your manager or to your clients, try to replace that word selling with serving because it's a subtle shift, mm-hmm. but to breathe into that and go, okay, what's the impact I'm going to have in how we approach? And that takes the, that, that pressure off. And we're all working to a bigger picture. So understand your why. That's the other thing when I'm working with clients, and I really encourage everybody Understanding your why, why you do what you do. And it's, it cannot just be for the money. I get that sometimes we need that paycheck because I have been there. But I work with women careers, and I know firsthand just being outstanding, delivering the work isn't going to be enough. So know your worth and the value of what you can bring to your organization or clients. If you're running that call center, Start real. Record the people who are telling you you're giving them great service, or how know the know the numbers. How many calls are coming in? How many satisfied customers are coming out? I mean that's just one example. But know know your worth, because the secret. And I always say there really is no secret. The secret is it's a strategy. But the secret mm-hmm. is to align your the, the, your worth and your brilliance to what your client and organization needs. And then you – I love how that. You it. That's it. And you got to keep it real. got to keep it real. Okay. So in in this day and, and age and, you know, people are looking for better jobs and they're going on interviews. I see a lot of that stuff in my timeline. Um, I went on five interviews today. Y'all wish me luck. I didn't oh, yeah. hear any anything back. Uh, if someone says, okay, I have all, my resume is on point, it stands out, so on and so forth. I have the experience. I have the credentials. I have so on and so forth. I went on this interview and I didn't hear back. Miss mm-hmm. Janet, tell me why that happened or okay. happened. Okay. You, I, I, it's, it's a, it's, <laughs> I'll try to narrow it down and maybe talk in a New York minute, but this is a really big topic, okay? It goes back to what do you look like on paper, meaning what do you look like digitally? What do you look like online? Like, for instance, you're LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. and you need to be on LinkedIn. And I don't care, you can have the best, that is, you can have the hottest, greatest picture of yourself from your girlfriend's party, um, you know, down in <laughs> Vegas, that is not the picture you want up on your LinkedIn. You've got to have a professional photo. I'm not saying you've got to go to huh? top of the line, but go somewhere. If you go in, go into the, it cannot just be your BFF taking a snapshot of you. Get a professional photo if you don't have one. Get one. Not where you cut out your ex. Okay. 
good photo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you look like on paper? There are places on just I could just do this on LinkedIn. On li- on LinkedIn alone that it's your own real estate up there, meaning next to your name where where you put like your title. That is your title. Think of your role or the role that you're applying for. So if you're looking to be an executive assistant or if you're looking to be the COO, that needs to be in that title. That's your real estate. Now, that's not faking the truth. That is like, for instance, my daughter has a job. She just graduated. She has a job, and her job title is Sorcerer. And I said to her, what the heck is that? And she's in HR. She said, sorcerer. I said, I hope you, this is mom talking, I hope you don't have that on your LinkedIn because no one's going to know what that means. <laughs> right. You need to have, it needs to say recruiter. Out jobs. Right. And you say recruit, okay. talent application, recruiter. You can't make the people who are looking for you work that hard because it is all happening in a nanosecond. Your resume is going through something called an applicant tracking system, ATS. So it's got to go through all of these systems before it even comes to some human eyes. And then those human eyes, you know, they're just like you. They're, they're, they're doing juggling a lot of things on their plate, so they're going through it really fast. So you have to first just pass all of the points of entry. So what I mean is, so do that self-inventory. I'm going to call them your brand elements. What are you looking like on paper? What does your resume look like? What does your LinkedIn look like? And the jobs that you're applying for, are you, remember I used the term mirroring, mirroring back keys and phrases. So case in point, if they're looking for a sourcer and you are a recruiter, you want to use that word sourcer in your LinkedIn, and in your resume. Why? Because the ATS, the Applicant Tracking System, is looking for those words. That's how. That's the new world. That is how it works. Now, if they're looking for... And that's, like with, um, that's yes. also like with when you talk about, I mean, you know, when we think about uh, SEO and, you know, using when people yes. use search engines yes. to find you, um, those are some of the things that, we have to, you know, consider, and even, you know, you mentioned LinkedIn, but I know, uh, you know, when people use other platforms, this is something I tell people all the time. People, I check people out. Oh. I, I check you out before I say, hey, you know, yeah, let's set a date. Let me get you on the show. Let's do this. Hey, can you come do this with my group? Or I think, you, you know, before I even accept a friend request, for instance, mm. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to see what you are all about to see if if I'm okay with coming up with people you know, you know. So people really have to look at not just what is fun for them, and fun for their family. We have to think about, you know, what other people see who don't know you but might want to hire you for a project or a new job or their organization or, hey, I see you, you know, your marketing looks really good. I like you. Can I bring you on to define you to to do some marketing and stuff for me? I'm going to look at, well, who are you as a person? Are you representative of my brand or are you just, not, you know, completely. I, I look at those things. We have like seven minutes left, but I wanted to ask you yes. a quick question because yes. I know a lot of people, um, they feel stuck. Job sucks. My life sucks. I'm stuck in my career. I hate Mondays. You know, Monday, the biggest heart attack day. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. What are yep. some acts people can take to uh, fix that? Yeah. Let me see if I can give you a couple of points on that because it is all, I call all of this, um, uh, you know, engagement and and re-inspiration at work. It is an inside job. So we Uh need to create that for ourselves. Um, So if, if, look, if you're no longer getting tapped for either a great assignment or you're feeling that your career is stalled, you're stuck, 
you're ready for a transition, well, definitely a personal brand is going to be able to, to, to start to catapult that. But it is not optional. It is optimal. You've got to have it. So we know that working with your brand, understand your, your, your values, but think about, to the time when you were excited to come into the office or what you were contributing to the industry. So if things are getting stale and a little predictable, you know, hey, it's like any relationship really, right? It, it happens. So sometimes you have to just roll up your sleeves and you got to spice up the situation. Um, so as I said, it's like a relationship and we don't want to take it for granted. You, 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 got it. you invest in your own other relationships, you have to invest in this one. And it doesn't, the best part really is, Valencia, it doesn't take as much time. So here's a tip number one. You can put some, some spark into new fire in, in your career. Tip number one, I would say reframing. So work can take on a really different meaning when you don't look at it as just like this boring task. But look at it as a chance to show off your skills. So in other words, what I'm saying is don't look at your job as just a job. Look at it, I always say, the way Olympic athletes view their competition. And that is that they look at it more as a performance. So if every task that you do is a performance to show how invested and knowledgeable you are in your field, you're going to start finding inspiring new ways to, to tackle those tasks and the projects. And don't get me wrong, I know that the stats show that 45% of Americans are satisfied with their job. That means 55% are dissatisfied. They're ready for a change or more recognition or more engagement or fulfillment. So you do some of this work and you, you start to reframe it. Tip number two would be curious. I did a post on this earlier this week where I said, think like a consultant. Come in like the outsider. Okay, be curious. So that can mean take on a task of learning something new. It could really be energizing, right, and really in, 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 engage you. Maybe there's a new way to do your you know, do your job. Maybe there's a new application or, or a new class or a new computer program for it. Or you can volunteer for a project, something that would normally be out of your scope. You can sign up for a learning class, right, another class in session. But then try to apply any of those takeaways to, to your role. Um, another way is about getting excited about work is getting creative with your ideas and projects. Now, sometimes it's hard if you're just sitting in a cubicle to, like, work up the courage to pitch an idea to your boss. But you, that is a good way of gaining visibility. And if there is a way for you to improve and streamline the situation and create some efficiencies, that A, will stop getting you to pull your hair out, and B, the boss will see that, you know, you're, you're approaching it with, with a way that is adding value, you will be heard. So when I say think like a consultant, gain a new perspective. Approach that task with fresh eyes. So let's say you're somebody coming in from the outside. Is there a way that you can save time? Is there a way that you can translate that into a win for the team, for the company, and ultimately for you and your brand? So those are about the three fastest ways to shake it up a little bit and put a little spice into right. it. Well, they yeah. have, we have to just start bringing a, a better version of, of us. We're running on like two minutes to the e top to the end of the show. So I want you to really quick go ahead and drop to the listeners how they can get more information about you and, you know, connect with you to find out how to name, claim, and aim their brilliance. Fabulous. Well, the fastest way would be to go to my website, which is www.wise, W-I-S-E, advantages, with an S, wiseadvantages.com. 
as soon as you go to the website, you will have an opportunity to download my free guide to developing your personal brand, your guide. So right there, your listeners could download and start working through some of the exercises. Uh, there's also a bonus uh, piece on there about getting re-inspired to work. It's a couple of pages. Um, so all short, sweet, relevant, to the point. That's probably the fastest way, wiseadvantages.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Miss Janet, for joining us on Define You Radio Classes and Session. It has truly been a learning experience. Mm-hmm. You guys, make sure you connect with Miss Miss Janet, her information is on Define You Radio's Facebook page and also on the show notes on Blog Talk Radio if you're listening online. With that being said, guys, class is over. Pen and paper's <laughs> down. Uh, and I want you guys, as you go into the next week, we should all ask ourselves, are we doing all we can to put our best, best foot forward? Right. Make sure you guys connect with me at ValenciaGWallace.com. And our quote for the week, Ms. Janet said it earlier, but I'm going to repeat it. It's your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. From yes. Mr. Jeff Bezos, I hope I'm saying that correctly. So I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Have a great week. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require a port and a number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers. Pizza. Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to Metro PCS. Stop by Metro PCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require port and a number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions.